Bom dia, Portugal gang. To the vine. This is Bessie Origins. Let's check it out. He's good, he's good. He's good, he's good. Weekend. It's Portuguese good. Before we get started, I notice that many of you who enjoy my content still haven't gotten around to subscribing. It costs you nothing to subscribe, but it really, really helps me out. So go ahead, smash that subscribe button. Go on, smash it. And if you don't... That's ignorant. All right, let's get into it. Wow, beautiful sunny day here in central Portugal. Well and truly into summer, guys. Absolutely loving it. Thought I'd get out for a ride and... Uh, talk to you guys about a, a, a funny kind of topic and um, it's kind of come about because a few people have asked me about the uh, the origins of our dogs <laughs> especially uh, since uh, I've been making videos about working at the shelter and um, a couple of people have asked um, why they have uh, such unusual names <laughs> So obviously there's Bessie, and then we have Foot Foot. What I'll do is I'll talk to you guys about Bessie today, and then I'll make another video about Foot Foot. I think they both deserve their own video, guys. Um, so yeah, let me uh, let me start with Bessie. So I'll tell you briefly the origins. I'll have to give you a little bit of the origins of me, really. Although I won't go go into that too much because I have made videos about that before. But anyway, as many of you will know, um, we were living in Hong Kong and um, various things, the political trouble in uh, Hong Kong and the uh, virus eventually um, spurred us on to make the, uh, the leap to come back to Europe, something we've been thinking about for a while anyway because of um, the, the old Brexit, don't like to mention the word Brexit, but um, I'd kind of been talking about wanting to get back into the EU before um, the Brexit deadline and that's um, a lot of that was to do with the idea of getting the uh, freedom of movement for my sons okay and um, so we went back to the UK um, early April um, 2020 so right in the middle of the first lockdown in London and um, we sat there waiting for the Finnish border because in the beginning we had planned to uh, go to Finland for various reasons We've lived in Scandinavia before, and um, yeah, anyway, we wanted to go to Finland, it ticked a lot of boxes for us. Um, but the Finnish border, like most EU borders, was shut, so we were sitting in good old Blighty, waiting for the uh, European borders to open. Uh, late June, um, France and Spain opened their borders to um, EU citizens, and so we decided that we would go to uh, Spain and um, wait in the sunshine for the Finnish border to open. So we drove down to um, Spain and we ended up in uh, Torria Vella. Torria Vella, which is, um, maybe you haven't heard of Torria Vella, but it's just south of uh, Alicante, which you probably have heard of right there on the, uh, the coast. Mediterranean coast, beautiful place. Um, not somewhere, to be honest with you, that I've got any particular interest in, uh, in living, but we thought we would sit there in the sunshine until um, yeah, until the Finnish border opened. Anyway, in the meantime, um, just a little bit about my dog history. Um, all my life, I've had um, Labradors or Labrador crosses, and um, it hasn't really been a planned thing, to be honest. But um, I, you know, I had a Labrador cross when I was a little kid. And so I've always had a soft spot for the breed. Um, they're kind of active in the way that I am. They love swimming. Um, they're loyal. You know, you know what a Labrador is like. So I've always, I've always liked Labradors. And um, in Hong Kong, we we'd had a black Labrador called uh, Sam. And um, anyway, what happened? We found ourselves in Spain, and you know, our family realised we had a kind of a a dog-shaped hole, if I can say that, a dog-shaped hole in our hearts. Um, and we thought, well, you know, um, why don't we go and have a look at the shelter and see if we can walk some dogs. So that was the original plan. And anyone who's done that knows, basically, you're going to end up with a, uh, a dog, right? That's what happens. You're going to end up with a dog. <laughs> and um, so we went out there and we sort of realised that. And, uh, and as a family, we sort of said, look, if we do get a dog, we're going to have to get a smaller dog. Um, 
Um, and that's just because, for example, in Todiavea we were living in an apartment. Where we were going to live in Finland, it would more than likely have been an apartment. And uh, we realised that our lifestyle was going to be a bit sort of uncertain um, for the next however long, especially as it was during COVID. And so anyway, we decided we'd get a small dog, which is something I'd never done before, but you know, um, I was happy with that. So the shelter, the shelter is in a town called Dolores. Dolores, which is um, probably about a half hour drive from Torrevea. And um, it's called SAT, Animal Protection. And I'll, I'll put a link in the video description to them. And uh, we were very impressed with them. The, the, the setup they've got really is kind of just a house. And they had like a massive backyard. It's in, it's in the sort of rural area. It's in a rural area. And um, most of the dogs um, are sort of free to run around in the backyard. But dogs who maybe have a bit of a temper um, are in, um, you know, they're kind of in little, uh, I don't know what you call them, like corrals or... Um, I wouldn't quite call them cages, they're big enough for them to run around, but anyway, you get the picture, you get the picture. Some dogs obviously do better for whatever reason um, with our other dogs. And I mean, when we went to see Bessie, she actually was in one of the enclosures, but she was in there with two other dogs. And what was funny about that, guys, the funny thing about that, <laughs> was um, almost immediately um, the woman who runs the shelter lied to me and I, I, I can't exactly say how I know she lied I don't even really think I'm that good a judge of character but it was just kind of funny because when, when um, she showed her because we said oh what dogs are up for adoption and she showed us that, that little enclosure and there was um, Bessie another uh, dog sort of similar in appearance to Bessie that turned out to be I think her sister or her brother and then there was a beautiful little ragdoll puppy you know and just straight away we were like oh yeah the puppy the puppy and she um, said to me oh no that puppy's already um, been adopted sorry about that and I, I don't know what it is, and I have never asked her, I, ha I have messaged her a few times with photos of Bessie since over the years, but um, I'm pretty sure she, she lied to me, but I don't mind, I'm glad she did. <laughs> so if you are watching, if you are ever watching this video, I'm glad that you lied. Um, and if you didn't lie, I'm sorry for accusing you of lying. <laughs> Would have been a cool lie anyway. So she directed our attention to, to Bessie and, you know, she said, um, you know, something I agree with now is like, well, what you've got to remember about puppies is, um, you know, they're kind of an unknown quantity. They could sort of grow to any size, especially if they're mixed breeds. Um, you know, they're going to become dogs soon enough anyway. And, um, you know, um, it might not be the smartest way, but in fact, when I do the video about foot foot, I'm going to give you a, a real life example and story about why you perhaps shouldn't uh, consider um, a puppy. A puppy may well not be the right choice for you guys, you know. I mean, it may be the right choice for you. Um, you know, different dogs fit different families and different lifestyles, but, um, you know, <laughs> foot foot. Uh, Puppies are kind of the obvious choice, right? But um, it, they don't always make sense. That's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, the story with Bessie, um, she'd come to the shelter as a puppy. Um, she was nervous around men, but could adjust to men. And they thought maybe um, a man had mistreated her. And she'd been in the shelter for almost two years. So when we got her, she was, she was around two years old. We put her birthday as being the, um, the 29th of July, which is the kind of the day we signed the papers for her, okay? So we then just backdated that two years. That's how we've come to that. Um, but we don't really know her exact birthday. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She likes uh, having happy birthday sung to her, and we like uh, spoiling her. So, <laughs> anyway, um, the, the woman who ran the place, she sat me down on a kind of a kitchen chair, in the um, in the kind of veranda area of this uh, this uh, dog shelter, and she put Bessie on my lap, and Bessie was shaking while she was, you 
you know, I know dogs, so I know she was scared. She wasn't, you know, angry or anything. And she weed on me, she bit me, she scratched me, she growled, all the things. But I know, I know it was fear. And um, people who know me <laughs> will know that to me, I was just like, well, I've got to take her now because, um, you know, God knows she's never going to get adopted. You know. She, she's, she's never going to get adopted when she's like this. And I could see that she was nice with the, uh, the shelter people, so I know she had it in her to be nice, that she was just scared. And um, it just bothered me that she was scared, you know, and I wanted to just kind of prove to her, fucking hell, you guys who, who know dogs, you know, you know, I'm like thinking, oh my God, I just want to show her that not all men can be assholes, and you know, I wanted to give her love and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, Anyway, we took her out for a little walk and she was much better like with my wife and, and things like that. So um, we said, um, we said, well, we'll have a family meeting. We went home and we thought we'd have her. <laughs> so we went out the next day and did the paperwork and paid for her, um, paid for her um, vaccinations and, and to have her um, neutered. And um, all that kind of thing. I can't remember, you know, 100, 120 euros or whatever it is. I, I, can't, I can't really remember now, but it wasn't an arm and a leg job or anything like that. And I think we um, added 20% on as a donation or something. We didn't have a lot of money then, but, you know, it seemed like the right thing to do. And then we had to wait, I think, about a week and a half because Bessie also had a virus, I think, that was going around the uh, kennel. I can't remember what it was kennel cough or something, I can't, I can't remember now what it was, but quite a lot of the dogs at the shelter had it, so we had to wait until the antibiotics got rid of that, it wasn't a big deal. Um, so I think, yeah, a week and a half, something like that, we were able to go get her. And, um, yeah, we were quite excited, we went out there almost every day and took her for a walk, and she got better and better, not really with me, but definitely with uh, my wife April, she got you know, better and better and calmer and calmer was more willing to um, walk around on the lead a bit. But anyway, the day finally came and we took her home and at the time we were staying in a, a, a small but really, really nice swanky apartment in Toto Vieja, kind of a resort place. They had a couple of swimming pools, beautiful gardens, um, you know, full on security and everything like that, you know, proper nice sort of place. and. Um, we were quite lucky that they didn't. Again, this was the other thing about um, having a small dog like Bessie. I think she weighs about seven kilograms or something like that. Um, just because um, it's very easy to sort of, it's very easy to kind of take Bessie places and uh, apologise later, <laughs> as it were. But yeah, anyway, she she settled into the home quite well, and um, at first she was still very frightened of me, guys, and you know. Every day, every day, I would spend time talking to her and speaking nicely to her and offering her little bits of cheese. And it took her maybe a week until she came and took some cheese from me and then just gradually, gradually, gradually. And then I remember the day when she, she would kind of walk up to me and kind of like tuck her head into her hands, her paws, I should say, sorry, tuck her head into her paws like she was kind of telling me that she was she she wanted to come she wanted to be my friend she was just scared and <laughs> fucking hell my grown man it almost makes me uh emotional remembering how she would like um because i felt like she was telling me she was like saying just just be a little more patient you know I, I i will come around just be a little bit more patient and uh so we gave her that i gave her that you know obviously and then, um, you know, finally when she came and allowed herself um, to be cuddled by me, uh, it was just such an awesome feeling. And, and, you know, me and Bessie, we've been absolute besties ever since. And um, she's got an awesome personality. She's like a lot of little dogs. She's got a sharp temper. And... Um, but yeah, she's she's good with it. She's very very loving, and once she gets to know you, um, you know, you're friends for life. That's how it is with Bessie. She's got a good memory, friends who she's become friends with, and that she hasn't seen for a while. Um, she remembers, and she will um, go for cuddles immediately. You know, so she's a very good girl like that. 
and uh, just one thing about that that was when we really knew she was hers a couple of weeks after we had her from um, the shelter we had to take her back to um, I can't remember if it was to have a booster shot or maybe just have a, I think it was a blood test just to like be sure the virus was gone or something like that, I can't really remember. But anyway, we took her back and like there were all the shelter staff were there, all the volunteers and the vet was there obviously. And she was so excited to see them. And Bessie does a thing, it's really cute when she's very excited and happy to see you or when she wants food or whatever, she's one of those dogs that would sit up on her hind legs, you know, and kind of walk like a person and she kind of like, um, I'm not gonna take two hands off the bar. Yeah, I am. She kind of like rubs her hands together like that. Do you know what I mean? And it's really, really gorgeous. And she was doing that. She was so excited to see them. And um, she had whatever it was she needed doing. And then without us calling her, once, once the vet thing was done, she came straight over to us and looked at the gate. You know what I mean? So like she, she was like, yeah, well, I know I'm going, I know, you know, I'm happy to see these people who I've known all my life, but I know you're my family and I know, um, I know that um, it's time to go home, yeah? And listen guys, I know if, if you've gotten this far in this video, you, you're a dog person probably. But if you're not really a dog person and maybe you've watched it just because you enjoy some of my other content and you're thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? Because, um, because um, you're obviously projecting human feelings onto your dog or whatever. I mean, that's fine. If you're not a dog person, okay, you don't understand it. But what I will tell you guys, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm actually planning a video where I'm going to talk about this maybe next week, is a lot of people talk about this kind of projection of humans onto dogs, human emotions. And what I want to tell you guys is, you know, if you live with a dog or a cat or any pet, you know, it doesn't take long until you know perfectly well that they have feelings, personalities, minds, wants, um, dislikes, um, you know, and when people talk to me about projecting feelings, I always think humans are, are so funny because for some reason, we're more than happy to know when a dog is angry, yeah? We're more than happy to know when a dog is, is sad or upset or depressed or lonely or scared. But for some reason, we can't accept it when we know that a dog is um, grateful or um, feeling guilty or love or friendship or enjoying the moment, you know? It's like, it's, it's like a kind of a narcissism of humans where we think, oh, they're our emotions, you know, no animal can feel that. Because I tell you, um, most animals, most sentient a animals, particularly uh, mammals, in my opinion, you can, uh, you can see it. And it's quite possible that um, other animals that have central nervous systems can to some degree or, or another feel all of those emotions too. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the name, the name. So I have to admit, we're obviously very used to um, calling her Bessie, but every now and again when we introduce her, people will sort of do a double take Bessie. And I think, yeah, now I can remember actually feeling that, that was quite an unusual name and asking them at the time. So um, I did ask them why, why Bessie? And just as quite a matter of fact, she said, oh, well, she's named after uh, Bessie Smith. She said, um, it's very difficult uh, over the years, you, you, you get dogs and you have to keep thinking of new names. And she said, so at the moment we're cycling through 1920s opera singers. And uh, Bessie Smith um, was uh, a US, not just an opera singer, but she was a blues singer. In fact, she was known as the Queen of the Blues. And I believe she was inducted into the Music Hall of Fame in uh, it's quite recently though, I think I think 2010 or something. I'm not, I'm not sure about that, you might have to Google that. I might, I, might put, I might put the information in the video description, but the main point was 
Bessie is after Bessie Smith, a 1920s uh, opera singer. So that's where they were getting the names for the dogs in the shelter from at that time. So there you go, that's the history of Bessie. And just to say she has several other names, um, we also call her Bess Wes. Um, she answers to Bess Wes. Um, we call her Chumba Wumba, uh, Princess. Um, what else do we call her? She's got quite a few names. Bessie Wessie, of course. Just a little bit of an extension on Bess Wess. Um, yeah, so she's got a lot of names. She got a lot of names. <laughs> but her real name is uh, is Bessie. And uh, yeah, she um, brings a lot of joy into our lives. And um, yeah, she's a um, she's a little dog, and um, we have been able to take her to a lot of places where perhaps you couldn't or shouldn't take a lot of dogs but um, you know even when we haven't been able to take her places and even when that stopped us from going places and you know other dog owners will understand this we've never ever resented it it's a choice we made um, you know when we got another dog was we know that dogs can sometimes <laughs> throw a spanner in the works when it comes to plans but we always think well you know if you won't accept dogs into your business it's your loss because you're not going to meet Bessie and uh, all Bessie has ever done is bring us uh, joy yeah and she's been on some real adventures with us you know um, it was very shortly after we got her that um, we realized we realized that the Finnish border just wasn't going to open uh, my wife's Schengen visa was going to run out. We really had to make a quick decision and that's when we realized that we would try Portugal. So she came with us on a first big road trip, literally within a couple of months of us getting her to Portugal and she was good as gold. She, um, she could speak Portugal, Portuguese almost straight away. It was amazing. <laughs> She had no problem communicating with uh, Portuguese dogs. So that was all good. And yeah, she was good as gold. Good as gold, yeah. And um, so she's lived with us in the Algarve. She's lived with us in Nazare. She's um, been all around Portugal. She's probably been to more places in Portugal than most Portuguese people. And uh, yeah, well-traveled, international dog. So anyway, guys, if you've got any uh, questions about Bessie, so I know that was a bit of a long, long-winded uh, talk when I was supposed to be just telling you about the origin of Bessie's name, but you know me, and I just thought I'd have a little chat with you while I'm out on the bike. But uh, if you like this type of content and you're new around here, please consider subscribing, it really, really helps me out. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.